Hopper Audio presents Make Up to the Breakup, My Life In and Out of Kiss. Narrated by George Peter John Criscola, the original Catman. We were having a party at our house in Canarsie one Saturday in April of 1972 when the phone rang. Lydia picked it up and then called out to me. It's some guy who wants to talk to you about your ad. I was half in the bag from drinking Mateus wine and smoking some pot, but I took the phone from her. Hello, this is Gene Simmons, and I read your ad, and I'd like to ask you a few questions, this guy said. He had a deep voice and enunciated each word like he was a teacher talking to a student. Uh, sure, shoot, I said. To be honest, I wasn't expecting much from this call. I had gotten a few responses to the ad and gone on a few auditions in the village once in Yonkers. But they were all really bad bands. How tall are you, Gene asked. I'm five foot ten. Are you fat? No, I'm nice and skinny. I was a fucking toothpick. I was a starving musician. Do you have long hair? Yeah, it's down to my tits, I said. Would you consider yourself handsome, good looking, or cute? Now it was a multiple choice test. This was getting ridiculous. So I turned to my friends in the apartment who had been listening to my answers. Am I good looking, I asked them. Fucking A, they shouted. I'm fucking gorgeous, I said. I had to give it to this guy. He was meticulous in the line of questioning, and he seemed to know exactly what he wanted from our conversation. Would you be willing to dress and drag? Would I be willing to dress and drag? I repeated the question for my audience. Absolutely, I have no problem with that. As a matter of fact, I'll play naked. I have a nine-inch dick. Everyone in the room cracked up. There was silence on the other end of the line. Uh, okay, Gene finally said. He told me he liked that I would be willing to do anything to make it, because he felt the same way. We talked for a long time, and during the course of the conversation, he told me that he had a band with his friend Paul named Wicked Lester. They had done some recording and had a deal for the album, but it didn't come out. They didn't like the guys in the band, and they were looking to regroup. Somehow he made this all sound very positive. When he told me that his producer was Ron Johnson, I got intrigued. Ron Johnson was the engineer on my Chelsea album, and when he asked if I can come meet him and Paul at Electric Lady Studios in the village where they had recorded, I was floored. That was the studio Hendrix had on. Now I really wanted to meet this guy who'd been asking me all these ridiculous questions on the phone. A few days later, I put on my black and gold velvet jacket, along with gold satin pants, an emerald green ruffled shirt, and green and burgundy suede shoes I had picked up in Spain. My hair was teased up in an afro. I was the shit. I took the train to the village with my brother Joey, who came along for more support. We got to A Street a little early, so we stopped into Shakespeare for a few beers. Then I left Joey at the bar and walked over to Electric Lady. As I was about to go in, I looked over my shoulder and two, saw two guys leaning on a car. They were really nondescript. Both of them had long hair and were wearing flowered, hippie, paisley shirts. They were staring at me as I rang the bell and went downstairs to the studio. I went up to her as a receptionist. Is there Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley here? Yeah, they're waiting right outside, she said. I went back outside and sure enough, there were the two guys leaning against the car. Immediately I thought, this fucking guy put me through the ringer about looking cool? These guys look like two fucking hippie panhandlers. When they saw me approach them, they lit up. They told me later that they thought I was someone famous going in to record. As far as Paul was concerned, I was higher on the spot. He didn't have to hear me play, he was so impressed by the way I looked. We made our introductions and went back in to hear the music. I couldn't believe I was in Hendrix's studio. It still had the curved walls, that alien spaceship feel to it. We went into one of the rooms and there was Ron Johnson, my old engineer from my Chelsea days. Wow, Peter, what are you doing here, he said. We gave each other a hug and I told him that I was being considered for Wicked Lester. You don't even have to audition him, Ron told Gene and Paul. This is your guy. He's the shit. They seemed to like the sound of that. Ron put on the tape. Almost anything sounds good on studio monitors, but this was really good. 
It wasn't the type of music that I loved or played. It was a little too heavy for my taste. They were obviously into Zeppelin, but I knew I could cut it. And I thought I could change the songs around in a way that they'd go for. I heard potential. Something in this music I could sink my teeth into. Because I'm the original cat man. Yeah. I'm a fucking big dick, man. Are you serious? I'm packing a weapon. Yeah.